Dear friends, at the outset, may I wish you a very happy Christmas and the blessings of love, peace and joy at the birth of the Lord. The celebration of Christmas becomes all the more relevant today as we go through mixed experiences of joy and suffering. Even amidst the development of BF7, a new variant of COVID-19, we are trying to be confident enough to face them with booster doses and added precautions. The Football World Cup has just been completed and we have witnessed the tears of some and smiles and cheers of many others. We still hear about the war in Ukraine, which continues to have its impact on oil prices and more eventualities in the affected areas. We hear about fishermen losing property, houses and their only means of livelihood. Some taste victory, while others taste loss and defeat. In this context, I am reminded of the novel Silas Marna, a famous novel written by George Eliot. In this novel, Silas is a poor weaver belonging to a Christian community in northern England. He is falsely accused of stealing and people in the community considered him guilty. The woman he wanted to marry also breaks their engagement and marries another. His life is shattered and he leaves the city and moves to a countryside. He lives a quiet life and devotes himself wholeheartedly only to concentrate on his profession of weaving. One foggy night, Silas two bags of gold are stolen and eventually he falls into depression. On a winter's night, a child accidentally enters Silas' house. He follows the child's tracks. He discovers that her mother also was dead. But he decides to look after the child. The arrival of the child brings joy into the life of Silas. He begins to love. He calls her Epi and she changes his life completely. Silas considers that the material gold that he had lost is returned to him symbolically in the form of the golden-haired child who was more valuable than gold. The child has a very strong bond with Silas and even when her biological father tries to claim her, she chooses to remain with Silas. They found happiness with the presence of each other. Silas' actions caring for the child apparently provided joy for him and for everyone in the family and they celebrate this happiness together. This is what happens at Christmas. The birth of child Jesus brings joy and love into the reality of human life. Whether we are poor or rich, black or white, saint or sinner, Winner or loser, Jesus is born into our situations, bringing joy and love. If we are able to find joy and love even amidst differences, brokenness, vulnerabilities, poverty and war, Jesus is born there. Jesus is born into this imperfect world, bringing joy, love and peace. Jesus is born into our ordinary lives with its joys and sorrows. According to a survey, the personnel in the Christmas story that most people have identified themselves with were the shepherds. The shepherds were average ordinary people. Jesus is born into our ordinary lives, bringing meaning to our lives with the gifts of joy, hope, peace and love. In the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 1, the evangelist begins the narration of his birth by presenting his genealogy. It is interesting to note that in Matthew's genealogy of Jesus, he names four women, Rahab, Ruth, Naomi and Tamar. Rahab was a Canaanite prostitute with courage and intelligence. Ruth was a pagan of the Moabite tribe. Naomi tricked a wealthy relative of her family into marrying her and Tamar was a deliberate seducer. Matthew also speaks of Bethsheba, the wife of Uriah, whom David married. Why did Matthew choose these imperfect women rather than choosing the heroic mothers like Sarah, Hagar, Rebecca, Rachel or Leah? It is clear that the message that Matthew wanted to convey was that Jesus was born for all. 
He was born for people of all classes. He was born for the poor and the rich. He was born for the saint and the sinner. He was born for the lost and the victorious. It is true about Christmas. Christmas is a very realistic celebration of family gatherings, of warm homes, a celebration of presents, decorations, celebration of children and family, celebration of ordinary people, a day of peace and hope. It is also a celebration, a call to look up, even if we are down. It is a call to bring down the walls of differences, differences between male and female, differences between races, and differences between saints and sinners. Isaiah wrote in a time of defeat for the Jews. He invites the people to look up towards the dawn of a new era. In Isaiah chapter 62 verse 2 we read, The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. The final point in the preaching of Saints Peter and Paul is that Christ's coming is good news to all those whose hearts are ready and open. In the Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 verse 23 Paul said, God has brought to Israel the Savior Jesus as he promised. The newborn baby of Bethlehem is the good news. He enters our lives. The good news is ours if we will accept it. Good news also belongs to our neighbors if we are willing to share it. This good news is joy and love. When we are able to bring love and joy to others, beginning with our family, even in our brokenness, Jesus will be truly born into our lives. When we are able to share the joy of Christ to our brothers and sisters, it is Christmas. May we possess these beautiful gifts of Jesus during our celebration of the birth of the Lord. Let us proclaim with the psalmist, All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God.